My thumbs really miss pipetting. The, yesterday, my lab mate was washing bottles and I got jealous. So I've been working on my thesis um, and preparing for my dissertation and I really miss like actual wet work, like at the bench experimenting. Um, so I'm feeling very nostalgic about lab equipment. So I thought I'd revisit um, this video that I made a couple months ago and I added some more stuff on to the end of things that I forgot to tell you about. Um, back then so basically just going over some basic biochemistry lab equipment and some of the terminology um, and equipment and that sort of thing um, I don't know why I'm doing this because then I'm just gonna get sadder probably um, <laughs> but let's take a look of course one of the most important things are pipettes so these are when we talk about pipettes in a biochemistry lab or a molecular biology lab, you're usually talking about these like micro pipetters. So they come in different sizes um, with different amounts of liquid and then they have different tip sizes that go into them and then you suck up liquid and push it out. Yeah, so we, we tend to refer to them by their sizes. So like this one is goes from 20 to 200 microliters and we call it like a P200. Um, so this one goes to 20, we call it a P20. This one goes to 10, we call it a P10. And this one goes to 1,000, we call it a P1000. So 1,000 microliters is one milliliter. Um, we also have a lot of tubes. Oh wait, before we move on to tubes, let's talk about um, other things. So this is a, another so this is another type of pipette so this is a pipette man so this guy like actually sucks up like bigger amounts usually and we have these different size of like sticky pipette things that go in here and then we can suck up liquid and push it out and so we use this for like larger volumes of liquid this pipe this thing is super super helpful um, so basically it replaces like bulby things like this um, and other type of bulby things that themselves replace mouth pipetting, which is literally what it sounds like people would like suck up um, liquid through pipettes, which is super, super dangerous um, and not a good thing to do. Um, other types of pipettes, so you have these like pasture pipettes, which are glass. Um, we use these um, a lot for like when we're doing pH balancing um, small amounts of like acid or base. Um, a transfer pipette, which are good for when you don't really need to be exact, but you just want to like squirt things from one place to another. Now we can talk about tubes. So these are Falcon tubes. Falcon is like a brand name, I think, but everyone just calls them Falcon tubes usually. So they have this like conical bottom, um, which makes them good for like centrifuging and stuff, but bad for when you like want to hold it up because it just falls down. Um, so then we have racks which can hold them and stuff. Um, so this is a 50 uh, milliliter. This is a 15. Yeah, I make little like re recycle like lab boxes and stuff to make things for my bench that'll hold stuff and be really handy. Um, so those, but probably the tube that we use the most often is the Eppendorf, which Eppendorf is another brand name, but it's this micro centrifuge tube, which is, they usually hold about like 1.8 milliliters. Um, and so if you think this thing is small, wait till you see the PCR strip tubes. So this is for PCR, which we talked about, which is that method to copy lots of DNA in the machine. Um, so these tubes are a lot smaller. I think they're like 0.2 milliliters, which would be 200 microliters for if you're trying to put that into perspective for the pipettes we talked about earlier. Um, so yeah, so we have these little like pulse spin centrifuges. So centrifuges is another super important thing. So a centrifuge is basically something that spins really fast. Um, and this is where like the conical comes in handy because you can like pellet out things and then they'll stick to the very bottom and you can suck out the liquid from above. Um, so this is like a pulse centrifuge. So it's just like a little lab bench one you can use when you want to spin things really quickly. Um, but then if you want to actually like spin things more controlledly and for a longer time and faster. Um, you have like bench top centrifuges like this. Um, so the tubes go in there, that's this lid. Um, and then you can set the 
settings for how fast you want it to go and for how long. This one actually has like a refrigeration too, um, but not all centrifuges do. Um, we also have a lot bigger centrifuges that I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but moving this way, this is our water bath. So we use this a lot for thawing cell pellets um, and for doing transformations, which is where you like um, heat shock to get bacteria to take in a plasmid um, DNA that you um, want them to take in. Um, and so this is at the end of my bench. And so I often think that people are coming to see me when really they're just coming to um, do the transformations. So I get very confused because I seem very popular, but really it's just the water bath. The water bath also makes really loud growling noises when it's um, running low on water. So if, that ha if you see that happen somewhere, fill the water so that people don't go crazy. Um, okay, so now let's go see those bigger centrifuges. So this is uh, like a bench top one. This one is really good for like purifying, I'm um, sorry, spinning down mini preps um, and protein um, co concentrating. It's swinging bucket, so it has these different like adapters you can put in to, for different sizes of tubes or plates. And then we have even bigger centrifuges in our centrifuge room. So yeah, so these are, we use these when we're spinning down like liters of cell culture. Um, so these are more swinging buckets. And then we also have these ultra centrifuges, which go super, super, super fast. Um, and those are really good for when you're trying to, like once you've broken out, broken, um, broken open cells and you want to spin out, like spin down, like to separate the soluble stuff from the membrane gunk. It's really good. And so these use um, these fixed rotor adapters. So the, the tubes are held in a fixed position, unlike the swinging bucket. We also have, another thing you might see is like shakers for um, doing like cell growth in little um, tubes, like after you do transformation, you're trying to um, like rec let the cells recover. And then we have a bigger shaker incubator, um, which we do for use for like um, doing mini prep, like smaller cultures. Um, we have larger incubators for other things. Um, we also have PPCR machines, which we've talked about before. Um, this is a spectroscoper, uh, is that the word? Um, so basically you stick your little cuvette in here and it measures how much light goes through different wavelengths. Um, and that can tell you, like you can use it for like Bradford and stuff um, to get protein concentrations. Or if you want to do it with um, bacterial cells to get like how, well, how much they've grown and stuff. Um, this is a nano drop, which is a similar type of thing but it uses a tiny little drop so you don't use as much sample um we also have a lot of other stuff like freezers so this is like a minus 20 freezer and these are our minus 80s which we use for like long-term storage of sensitive things like proteins so those are really really cold um and one a couple last things before i forget this is a vortex um so basically you stick your finger or, well, you don't usually stick your finger, but you stick something on here and it'll vortex. So it like mixes it up really well. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, I can't, yes, I can't forget to show you parafilm, which is like the world's greatest thing. So parafilm is kind of like this waxy, thick, like cellophane type stuff. That gets, you can stretch it out a lot and you can use it to like wrap around the edges of tubes or petri dishes or stuff that you don't want um, things to leak into or out of and it's really really fun to play with and really really awesome and lasts like forever um oh and these are just a little tip this is really um handy for doing like making a pcr strip tube rack is you take the tip racks um like once you for these tip boxes they usually come in like trays um 
sometimes they come in like just bags and you have to fill them yourself which is what I did in underground but here we have them come in these trays and so when you replace the tray then you're left with like an empty rack and so you can um, put a couple of them together and tape them and it makes a really good holder um, you want to be really careful with anything that has to do with heat or flame or fire of any sort um, and so you might have seen one of these. This is a Bunsen burner. Um, it uses like this striker thing here. It's connected to this gas line and when you turn it on, then this gas and then you strike and then you get a flame. But you wanna be really careful that there's nothing flammable in the area and you clear the space and all this stuff first. So be careful. Um, next to the gas line is actually here, there's like a vacuum line. Um, and so we can plug this into it and we do like a vacuum filter. Um, so we have this device that we stick on top of bottles um, and then you put a filter and it like suctions things through. There's also an airline um, and yeah so I was confused how these work at first but if anyone else is confused you just like put the turn the knob so it lines up with the thing and then make sure you turn it off when you're done. Um, another thing that can get hot is this heat plate, which I don't use really for the heat, which is why I like have it taped closed so that I don't accidentally press the heat knob. Um, and I also leave it turned off so that I don't accidentally have it on. Um, but then the stir, stir bar, it, so it's basically, it has a magnet -y thingy in here. And then you put a magnetic stir bar in your um, flask and then you can adjust the stirring and the stir bar will stir in your glass. And if you turn it on and you wonder why nothing's stirring, you probably forgot to put it in the stir bar, which happens all the time. So those are a couple things on my bench that I had forgotten to show you before. Um, so also on my bench, you'll see there's a lot of like buffers and stuff. Um, so that's like pH stabilized salt water and I have like stock solutions of various salts um and buffers and stuff so stock solutions where i have like a higher concentration of it um and then i can dilute it into various things um this is our so now let's go to stuff for electrophoresis um so that's where we use electricity to send molecules like proteins or dna traveling through a gel mesh to separate them by size and so this is um for agarose gel electrophoresis for like dna um, we have boxes for SDS page. Um, they click, hook into, so that's for proteins, and they hook into these power boxes. Um, let's see, we have like balances. This one's like more accurate. It's got this little, little like shield thing to shield it from air so you don't have interference. We have a shaker platform, an illuminator tray, so you can like look at your gels. Um, we also have like a gel dock scanner thing that you can actually take pictures of your gel so we actually got like and it has a trans illuminator for like uv stuff so we actually got a new one recently which is pretty cool um and so yeah so it actually has this like tray and you put the different trays in so it's a lot higher tech than our old one which is good because our old one drove everyone crazy because it took like five hours to focus um anyway um so if you walk uh, so these thingies, those are carboys. Um, and so they're just like big, kind of like you might see at like a sports event where you have like a thing of Gatorade or something where they have a strippy thing. Um, here we keep a big tube in uh, that thingy too for like um, sanitizing, like disinfecting like bacterial or insect growth media so like the food that we grow the cells in we pour some bleach in there we let it sit um to disinfect everything before we actually like um dump it down the drain or anything um this is our cold room this is my least favorite place in the world but look at all those boxes of insect cell media we finally got so exciting it was back ordered for like four months um and we were having to try like making media from powder and all this stuff and that was not fun um since we're a structural biology lab we do a lot of protein purification um and so we do a lot of that in the cold room and also with our actives that i'll show you in a minute but we also do some like crystallography and cryoelectron microscopy or at least my lab mates do um, cryo EM. I did some crystallography, but I haven't done it in a while, but this is our crystallography room. Um, so we have like 
robots, machines called mosquitoes that can actually like help us set up drops, which I've done the post on that, but basically trying out a bunch of different conditions to get a protein to crystallize so you can take pictures of it. Um, and the way that we take pictures of it, well, they're not really pictures, but they're diffraction images. So basically you shine x-rays and then the x-rays interact with the atoms um, in the protein and then they scatter those x-rays and then they um, hit a detector and they get measured and then you work backwards from this pattern of spots called the diffraction pattern and more on that in the crystallography posts. But this is our home source um, and so it's not nearly as powerful as like when we want to actually collect like high quality data where we go to a synchrotron which is like a super super powerful um, beam line that can do, it does way more than just like X-ray crystallography stuff, but it's really powerful and we go there for that sort of thing. This is the cryo -EM, um, and so, yeah, I don't do this, but this is our big Titan Krios. Um, um, more on that in another post too. This is my favorite, favorite place probably. This is our purification room, our active room. We're so fortunate that because we do so much purification, we have like four actas, so each of those columns, we have different types of columns and they have different types of resin in them. And so resin are these like little beads. Um, and when you flow a solution containing proteins through the resin, um, so in that column, they're going to, the column, the proteins are gonna interact differently with the resin. And so they're gonna flow through at different rates um, and, or they might get like stuck and then you add a competitor to unstick them if you're doing like affinity purification. But basically they're a way to separate various proteins based on their properties and how that makes them interact with the different resins that are in there. So it has all these lines and you stick it through and then the protein goes through the column and then it goes through into this like fraction collector and goes out into a fraction collector. And so I have a post on using the actas and the different parts of the actas and stuff in a different post as well. If people are really wanting more of that because I have plenty to say about them um, and I really love them and yeah. Okay, so just a couple more things before I forget. So that's all like the really fancy, fancy, dancy equipment. But the real stuff that makes a lab run is all of like the bottles and flasks and various things. And so we have all sorts of different types. So these are like those um, pipettes that I was talking about before. We have like different sizes that you put hook up to the pipette men. And these are like, we have plastic bottles for when we're spinning down cells. Um, we have all sorts of graduated cylinders. So um, basically like you want to use the smallest one that you can that will still like hold the volume because um, the lines between them like if you're on like a huge one then the line like each of the lines or whatever between them they're like a bigger volume separate them basically you can't measure as fine a distance between things um, as accurately um, but we have graduated cylinders of all sizes um, then we have Erlenmeyer flasks um, which those lines and the lines on the beakers, these are just like approximate lines. So you don't want to be actually like measuring with these, um, but they're really great for when you're doing things, um, like dissolving salts or whatever in solutions. And then you pour, so you dissolve them in one of these with like a stir bar on your plate. And then, then after it's all dissolved, you pour it into a graduated cylinder and add volume to the actual line. Um, so these are our Pyrex um, bottles. Um, so just like a quick thing to keep an eye on is these should have this plastic ring. A lot of times the plastic ring comes off and then they don't seal as well. Um, Another thing is that like sometimes if you autoclave them a lot, which I'll talk about the autoclave in a second, they get all crusty like this. And then it can actually like the crusty stuff like falls into your bottle and it's really annoying, especially if you had just filtered it. Um, and yeah, so that is something to keep an eye out on. Um, and so you want, and also watch out for cracks and stuff, which are really gonna impact when you're trying to do like a vacuum filter. So this is what I was talking about before. This goes on the top of those bottles. Um, and so it has like one of these and you put a filter on top and this goes like this and this and they screw it on and then the vacuum pulls it through. But you're not gonna get a good suction if there is a 
pull um, if there's like a crack in the lid or whatever. And so be careful about that. Okay, yeah, so we see saw that stuff before. So I think the only thing I have to show you is... Oh, one thing I forgot to say when we are talking about the centrifuges is so we keep those rotors. If you wonder why I was like going back behind the door before, we keep the rotors, like the fixed angle rotors in the fridge um, so that they're already cooled and we don't have to worry about like pre-cooling them down. For these big centrifuges, um, you want to keep, if you're not using it, you want to keep it open but off. Um, if you keep it open but on, it's gonna try to cool down if it's like set for like four degrees Celsius or whatever we normally set it at. It's gonna try to keep it cooling down and then it's gonna cause all these problems and you'll get condensation and you're wasting a bunch of energy and stuff. So that's not good. Um, ice maker, that's really good. Um, although when like when it gets hot and stuff, it, we tend to like lose ice. It disappears, I don't know. But anyway, um, this is like some of our pre-made um, bacterial media. So we have a media maker who is amazing. Um, and so she makes all this various media and then she um, sterilizes it in an autoclave, which is like a big um, high pressure steam cooker oven thingy um, that's going to like sanitize everything. So that's at the end and here's like, a, these like dishwashers um and so things go in the dishwasher and then they go in the autoclave and then they go in the drying oven um this is like a milliku water purifier um and so that carboy was showing you by the sink in our lab that actually has water from there so she fills those um for us and like delivers them because the milliku purifier it makes water really really pure but it's really really slow um and so it's helpful to have just like a big bucket uh, like a big thing of it that you could just pour out of um instead of having to wait drip 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 yep okay so hope that you enjoyed that little tour of the lab and I got to get back to thesis writing. Although now I wish I was writing. I mean, I was experimenting even more. And if you want a text version, um, I have this post from January. I'll put the video up too, um, with text and some figures. Um, so yeah, so I'll put the link in and take, you can take a look if you want. You don't have to. Okay. Bye. <laughs>